Hello everyone, I'm Chris Eby, and I'm coming to you from what is currently cold and snowy Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So I hope you're warm and comfortable wherever you are, because I'm going to be talking to you about Experience Builder today. If you're not familiar with Experience Builder, don't feel bad. It just came out in February of 2020, so it's barely a year old, and the best way for me to describe it is it's the modern version of Web App Builder. So I'm going to tell you about my first project using Experience Builder, why we decided to use it. I'll show you a little bit of the custom development we did for the project, and then I'll show you how our Experience Builder site turned out. So I work for GeoDecisions. We're a GIS consulting company, and we do a good bit of custom development. And we are actually a division of a larger engineering company called Gannett Fleming. And one of the things that Gannett Fleming does sometimes is whenever one of their other teams has a need for GIS development, they contact us as their in-house software and GIS experts uh, to help them out. And that's how this project I'm about to tell you about started out. Uh, our office in Miami, Gannett Fleming's office in Miami, uh, had a project for the Florida Department of Transportation to do a bicycle network assessment in the city of Miami. So their team had built a lot of ArcGIS online layers, put them on a web map, and they even built their own web app builder app to display this with the idea that they would be able to take it around to show it to various stakeholders and get input and feedback on the plans for the bike network. However, they had a couple features that they wanted to add to their web app builders app that they were just out of their depth when it came to implementing. Uh, they weren't developers and they weren't sure how to proceed. So they came to me and uh, as I was listening to them talk about what they wanted, they wanted the site to be more responsive and look better on a tablet. And they wanted the ability to mark up and edit the map and uh, you know, automatically, digitally provide the feedback that they were looking for. And so as I was listening to them, I was thinking, this could be a job for Experience Builder. Because uh, from what I had learned about Experience Builder, uh, it really fills in a lot of the gaps in Web App Builder, especially when it comes to uh, allowing you to set up different layouts for different screen sizes. And I was also familiar with the way that customizing it uh, used a much more modern way of doing things that should make it quite a bit easier for us to do that. So let me show you the Web App Builder app that our business users in Miami built for themselves. Uh, I actually thought it was pretty good for a bunch of non-developers. Uh, you can tab through the different sets of layers, turn things on and off in the map, and uh, they were able to, to do this themselves, but they wanted a couple things differently. Like I said, they wanted an editor widget, and they wanted, if you see here, when you select in the, one of the features in the map, uh, it brings up the default ArcGIS for JavaScript API feature info pop-up. This uh, they didn't like because they said it covered up things on the map and they thought people would find it hard to use. So they would really want it to be moved over here into this sidebar so that you could select different features and not have it overlay on top of the map. So I looked into it and I downloaded the Experience Builder SDK version one and I started prototyping and to see how far I could get uh, with Experience Builder in replicating this and enhancing this for the functionality that they wanted. 
And what I found was that I could very easily, actually, let me just show you here in Experience Builder. If you're not familiar with Experience Builder, this is what it looks like. This talk is not intended to be a presentation on how to use Experience Builder. I am sure that in this very conference, there will be um, maybe even more than one talk about Experience Builder and how to use it and how to customize it. Uh, and that those talks will be done far better than I can do. So look those up if you want the details of uh, how Experience Builder works. I'm just going to try and provide an overview in the context of the project that we worked on. So you can see Experience Builder has a very like drag and drop interface. You can drag widgets very much the way Web App Builder does uh, and drop them into your site. Uh, although it allows for a lot more customization about where the widgets go. Uh, over here on the side in the configuration for each pane and widget, you can uh, customize and style it a lot of different ways. And then you can also switch between different views and see how the site will look and adjust it in this view in a way that won't break it in other views. So. We really like that. That's a lot of uh, improvements over the way Web App Builder works. And so we were able to quickly replicate that interface of switching between the tab groups and turning layers on and off with the map. But unfortunately, when it came to the editor widget, even though there are some editor widgets in Web App Builder, there was no editor widget in the list of widgets uh, in Experience Builder. So we figured we we're going to have to, if we do it with Experience Builder, we're going to have to write that ourselves. And also the pop-up in Experience Builder worked the same way that the pop-up in Web App Builder did, overlaying on the map. So it came down to having to write those two widgets ourselves. So did a little bit more research on custom widget development, and I found that unlike Web App Builder, which is written using the Dojo framework, uh, which is nobody's favorite framework anymore, uh, Experience Builder is written with the React framework. Now, Dojo made a lot of sense in the Web App Builder world. Web App Builder uh, used the JavaScript API version 3, and that was built on Dojo. So it makes sense to build a site using only one framework so that you don't have to pull down multiple frameworks and add to your download and render times that way. Uh, so it made sense to do that, but Experience Builder is built on the ArcGIS for JavaScript API version 4. And that originally used Dojo as well, but the team has been stripping Dojo out of that API version. And currently, if you're just an API consumer, you really wouldn't know that Dojo was there at all. My understanding is it's still underneath the hood, but they have plans on removing it in future versions. So that's one of the great things about version 4 of the JavaScript API in that it's much more framework agnostic and you can mix and match it with your favorite framework, whether that be React or Angular or Vue, a lot more easily. So Experience Builder takes advantage of that to be written in React and all of its custom widgets are written in React as well. So Looking at these examples that Esri provided, we felt like it would be easier to customize Experience Builder than it would be to do the same customizations that we would have to make in Web App Builder. Even though Web App Builder had some editor widgets pre-built ready to go. So we took this back to our team in Miami and we told them, so here's what it would take in Web App Builder. Here's what it would take an experience builder. Uh, we think it might, we're not as quite as familiar with experience builder, so it might take a little bit longer for experience builder, but it's also the shiny new thing. 
which do you want us to use? And they said, we'll take the shiny new thing. So that was awesome. And we got started on our project. The first widget I want to show you that we got done was the uh, editor widget. So this is the part where I promised code and now I'm going to show code. All right, here I am in Visual Studio Code and we're looking at basically if you download the Experience Builder SDK and extract it, you've got this file structure, a client and a server. Uh, Client is the actual source code for the Experience Builder site that I was just using. And server is the code that serves that site. So when you start it up, you have to start both the client and the server folders using npm start and, you know, do npm install on both of them and stuff. But all of your customizations when it comes to widget customization all happen here in the client folder. So I'm going to pull that open. And then if you go in here to your extensions, this is where you can put all of your custom stuff. There's both custom themes and custom widgets. We use custom themes. If you look here, uh, we do have a couple custom CSS styles. Uh, although there's not very many considering uh, the amount of customization that we did which speaks to the inherent customability of Experience Builder. You know, every widget has a lot of different features that you can go in there and change fonts and colors and everything like that. Uh, so there's a lot more you, you could get into when it comes to custom styles and themes that we didn't have to do. And uh, so I'm not going to go into very much depth on that, but I did want to mention it. If you come in here to the widgets folder, you can see our two custom widgets. And I'm going to start here with the editor. So there is pretty good documentation out there on how to create a custom widget. And when I sat down to start this, I was aware that uh, the ArcGIS for JavaScript API version 4 has a pretty decent ed editor widget built into the API. If you're not familiar with it, it looks like this. There is, a, say, if you want to do an add feature, you can go in here and these are point features because this is a point layer. If it's a line layer, it automatically lets you create lines instead of points. And once you've placed your feature, then you can fill in the metadata about the feature before you add it and it will save it back to your feature service. So this pretty much did everything that I wanted my editor widget to do. So what I really wanted to do was reuse this inside of Experience Builder. And I even found some samples from Esri that showed how to reuse an ArcGIS for JavaScript API widget as an Experience Builder widget. So the code I'm showing is uh, kind of taken from that and based on that. And what you're seeing here is the widget.tsx file. These other files in here are all kind of boilerplate widget files that aren't all that interesting to talk about. The, it's a, if you notice, it's a tsx file. If you're familiar with React, you know that uh, the default for React is jsx files. Uh, a tsx file stands for TypeScript instead of JavaScript. And it is... Um, if you're familiar with TypeScript, it's a, it's a, I like it a lot. It's a, an improvement on JavaScript in allowing you to make your code more, a little more type safe and easier to use with IntelliSense and things like that inside of Visual Studio Code. Uh, so I think it was a good choice by the React team to use TypeScript uh, for Experience Builder. And so you'll see some of these things, uh, these are the TypeScript types being pulled in to this widget code. So a couple areas I want to highlight in this widget. A lot of this again is kind of boilerplate widget code, but important thing here is that we are importing the editor object from the ArcGIS for JavaScript API. 
And then that will allow us to use it inside of our widget code. So this is the widget class, and this is the active view change handler that basically we're using it because it fires whenever the widget loads. So if I jump down through here, some more of this widget boilerplate, we get down to this piece of code. This is where I instantiate the editor object. And per the ArcGIS for JavaScript API documentation, I'm passing in a view. If you're familiar with the ArcGIS for JavaScript API, you know that every map has a view object that uh, you use. And this is being, this view reference is being passed into the widget by Experience Builder. So I'm setting it to the view of my map and I'm setting the container that the widget will be rendered into. So this was the key thing because the default uh, editor widget renders inside the map in the floaty way that I showed you in that sample. But I wanna render it inside of my own div outside of the map. And so I have this, this is actually the ID of a div in my HTML. If you're familiar with React, you know that the render function is what actually turns your JavaScript template, your JSX or TSSX template into HTML code. And this JMC code is just stuff that runs in Experience Builder whenever you take the widget and drop it into your experience for the first time. It asks you to select which map you need to link your editor widget too. So it's not actually even used uh, by somebody who's using the compiled version of the app. So really it kind of came down to just having this div inside of my widget and instantiating the editor object once the widget loads. And once those pieces kind of came together, I had what I wanted where I could put that editor widget anywhere on the page and have it create features and save them back to my feature service on ArcGIS Online. So it came together, it's pretty simple code, but maybe some of you who are real experts in either React or Experience Builder are thinking, is this the best way to do it? And my answer to that is no, this is not the best way to do this. And I know because since I wrote this code, Esri has released a sample in their samples GitHub repo of an editor widget. If you go in here to the runtime SRC, there it is, widget TSX. And you can go down through, and their code is actually shorter and cleaner than mine. If you were wanting to make an editor widget today, all you would have to do is copy and paste and drop this into that your extensions folder and you'd have a nice editor widget. And Ezra even went so far as to do a, a nice little write-up of uh, what all is going on in this widget so you can understand how to enhance it if you needed to. So <clears throat> it's nice that they released it. I wish that they would have had it out at the time that I was writing my code. I think it came out about a month after I finished my stuff. Uh, but it just goes to show uh, how many nice samples they have out there in their documentation already. One other nice thing about existing sample code is that all of the code for the widgets in Experience Builder is available to you as a developer, all of the source code. If you go in here to the disk, folder and widgets and you'll see here Esri calls it the Jimu library which is what they kind of built experience builder with and there is source code and widget tsx files for every single one of those widgets that come out of the box with experience builder so we found that really handy because if there was some functionality that you see one of the default widgets doing and you wanted to 
add that to your custom widget or you wanted to take it and tweak it a little bit, then it was very easy to come in here, see their code, take it, drop it into your own widget, copy it, paste it, whatever, and replicate that functionality. And that came especially in handy whenever it came to our second custom widget, the custom feature info widget. And this one's a little bit more complex, so I'm not gonna go into the same amount of detail that I did on the other widget, but basically the existing feature info widget did 95% of what we wanted it to do, but it was linked to a specific layer in the map. And we wanted it so that if you clicked on any layer in the map, it would display the info for the feature found underneath there. And so we dug around in the existing widgets and we found that the list widget that came with Experience Builder worked that way. So what we did was we, we kind of copied the feature info layer and then we copied the message actions functionality from the list widget. And the message actions is the way in Experience Builder that's built in that allows widgets to talk to each other. So we use the message actions from the list widget to talk to the feature info widget and pass the correct feature info that we wanted to display. Then we applied the styles that we wanted to see to make it look nice the way that our team in Miami wanted it to look. And we had another custom widget. So let me show you what our app ended up looking like. Here it is. You can see it looks kind of like that web app builder app. You can tab between these, turn things on and off. But when you click on one of these features, this is our custom feature info widget and it displays all of the feature info pulled from the map through the message action into our for custom formatted display here. And then the editor widget shows up if you click this how to improve the network button. So if you wanna add a feature, you can pick the layer, start drawing, and then it comes up with the fields that we selected to be editable uh, for this feature layer. So once all the required fields are filled out, you would be able to add it. And we configured the permissions in ArcGIS Online so that you would be able, anybody can create a widget, but the only the, we can only see those features that are created on the back end. So that way you don't have uh, all the annotations that everybody ever created showing up on this map. Uh, it basically, it's, it's sort of, uh, creates them, stores them to a table, but doesn't, but all of the layer features are actually hidden when it goes to display the map. So this works pretty much like the team in Miami was envisioning. They're pretty happy with it. They're using it for their workshops to get their stakeholder info. And uh, our clients were really pleased and impressed that we were using uh, experience builder and kind of the cutting edge technology from Esri to do this. So it was a win in lots of ways. And to finish up, I just want to talk a little bit about some takeaways. You know, it, we were evaluating experience builder and web app builder and comparing and contrasting the two. And there were, uh, you know, some pros and cons. Web App Builder has been around for years and years, 
and has so many widgets out of the box available to it. There was an editor widget already existing that we could have used and wouldn't have had to do any custom development with Experience Builder. So if that was all we needed, it probably would have made sense to just use Web App Builder this time. Uh, Experience Builder version one, it, you know, version 1.3 is the current version and it has a few more widgets, but it's still maturing as a product. I fully expect that uh, there will be an editor widget out of the box someday. Uh, there's already samples out there for you to implement, but uh, I'm sure that Esri is just polishing up their functionality to get it to uh, be an out of the box widget at some point. So it's growing. It's not 100% there yet. Uh, I think it's not uh, for us going to be a, you know, a default choice. It's going to have to be a case-by-case -case evaluation as to whether it should be a web app builder app or an experience builder app. But we really liked a lot of what's going on with experience builder. The fact that it's written in React uh, which is much more standard, much larger community uh, of developers that know it and know how to use it, uh, was a big plus, a big plus for us uh, as developers and, be, you know, giving us a jump start in figuring out how to create our own widgets. Uh, we really liked how it fills in the gaps when it comes to, you know, responsive design um, compared to Web App Builder. And even the ability of widgets to talk to each other using that message action. That's always been one of the sticking points with us with Web App Builder customization. And we're really happy that the Experience Builder team has added so much of that into kind of the behind the scenes of it uh, on top of all the additional customization options that they're giving us in Experience Builder. So I hope that this has been helpful for you to kind of understand Experience Builder, uh, what it does that Web App Builder doesn't. And I hope that uh, you have a great rest of your Esri Developer Summit 2021.